Hi, in this video I'd like to ask, is it possible to ask for people's help on the internet, on YouTube, to do a kind of project, and in this case a kind of crazy electric car replacement project, so that I don't have to replace my own electric, although I'm still interested in electric cars and I'm filming them all the time when I see them around here in Aarhus, Denmark. Um, yeah, but I might not replace my UK Ionic Electric here just yet, as I've been saying in previous videos, but it might be interesting to sort of follow through the kind of electric car logic and the kind of things I've got used to with electric cars. Um, and I seem to be trying to apply it to the world of bicycles. So could I do a kind of electric car replacement project with help from people on the internet? What do you think? Let's talk about it in this video. So what's prompted this idea? Well, I've been looking at electric bikes, electric cargo bikes here in Aarhus, Denmark for some time, because I don't think I'm really ready to sort of splash out on getting an electric car, an EV as yet, be that a Tesla, be that the new Renault Zoe, a second-hand Ionic Electric uh, to replace the one I used to have in the UK, all these kind of things. So I've been looking at other things, and uh, this week actually I had a lot of fun test riding one of the Coast Cycles Buzzroar, the Buzzroar E250, a 250-watt kind of fat bike big thing. Uh, I didn't film it unfortunately because it was just a few minutes before the shop closed but I've got some footage here of me sort of sitting on it uh, the week before and it was a lot of fun. I had the same feeling that I got when I first test drove the Ionic Electric back in the UK. That kind of feeling when you test something and it just feels right and fun and kind of fits you, fits your body, fits your kind of you know your sort of uh, maneuvering and so on. I really like the kind of wide wheels and so on and it was a scream. I don't know how they've done it. I don't know whether it is actually a 250 watt motor in it but it goes like a rocket, it goes up and down hills, it's got eight gears, and it looks like a lot of fun. So I'm currently inquiring whether I can put racks on the back of that and put a kind of child seat on and, and carry my sort of younger son to kindergarten on that, because it can have cargo racks in the middle so I could carry various bits and pieces. So that could be a really fun short-term stopgap until I get something um, through the winter, admittedly, could be a problem. Certainly I've been looking at electric bikes, but I've been looking at them very much through the, through the mindset of having had an electric car before and thinking of those kind of things and not really wanting to, uh, you know, to be on something that's unstable, uh, wanting something that's fun, wanting something that kind of replicates as many car-like qualities as you can get away with, with a kind of, you know, not a car, but a bicycle. But having the benefits, I guess, of no insurance, no tax, um, you know, no huge outlays and overheads and kind of maybe simpler servicing and so on, but still trying to get some of the characteristics in about being able to carry passengers, being able to carry cargo, and it being, you know, reasonably pleasant to ride. So I was kind of thinking about this, and I've been in touch with a company in Sweden that are headquartered, I think, in Gothenburg, Sweden, and they make something, the company called V-Love, or Velov, or Velove, apologies for pronunciation, the Armadillo. So it's an actual four-wheel, full-suspension cargo e-bike where you sit in a recumbent position, so you sit in a proper seat like a car, and your legs are kind of out in front of you, and you pedal like that. And I think it's got like an automatic uh, gear-changing system, and uh, you can slot in, they don't actually use them in parallel, but uh, you can carry six kind of batteries on this. So if they're 500 watt hours each, you could have a three kilowatt hour battery on this thing. I think it's about 300 kilograms. Anyway, I was kind of waffling about this kind of um, thing to a colleague of mine. And then we walked up to one and saw a guy riding it for DHL. So they're used for this kind of last mile, uh, more sustainable transport and mobility kind of wave that's going on around the world. Lots of startup companies trying to work out how to take vans out of cities. Um, how to take kind of, you know, petrol and diesel vehicles out of cities and have these kind of smaller, more flexible, lower kind of, you know, carbon and energy footprint, last mile vehicles around. So yeah, this was one of them. And we saw it and we chatted very briefly with the rider. I was going to say the driver, but the rider. And he seemed to like it and he whizzed off at a fair old speed. And it even has kind of lights and indicators. You can buy those as an option. People have used them so far, I think, mainly for cargo. Um, so taking cargo sort of from distribution centers into cities rather than having vans do that whole thing with a, with a bigger kind of carbon footprint and noise and pollution and the rest of it. Um, but they basically come with a kind of rear rack. So I contacted Velove or Velov to uh, see if they do a passenger version that I could just buy out of the box. And they said, no, they hope to do that sometime in the future, but I would have to basically build something on the chassis. That got me thinking, you know, could that be an interesting YouTube project to do that? Would that be something you'd want to watch? Would that be something you'd want to kind of network me maybe with people to do that? I have no idea how to do it. It could be a really fun thing in that I literally wouldn't know where to start. Velove, they have other videos online of, you know, them racing them, they handle fairly well, they're rear wheel drive, interestingly, and they have full suspension and they seem to handle quite well uh, like I said, there's videos of the team that make them racing them. Someone has made a two-seater version already. Someone has ridden it quite long distances with a solar panel. Because I guess because the batteries don't run in parallel, you could charge a battery while you're using the other one. 
So you could actually go for quite some distance with it if you've got the kind of setup right. All these things add cost and weight, obviously, as well. Other people have been camping with them. Um, you know, you could sort of put tent equipment in the back of it, so you could sort of do tours and holidays and things and uh, have a bit of fun getting away from things. So not quite, you know, John Neil London his Tesla Model 3, where he kind of sleeps in all his cars, but something like a similar experience, but on a kind of closer, more intimate scale to where I live, I guess. And uh, yeah, there are, there's a company called Quicab, again, may not have pronounced it right, that have done a kind of demo prototype um, taxi with this. And it's a trailer based thing. So it's actually more than the sort of base armadillo unit. There's just four wheels, but they've done that and demonstrated that somewhere in the world. Other companies use them to deliver food with refrigeration in it. People have used it in cold environments as well in, um, in Norway. And uh, yes, yeah, someone has actually ridden one of them 17 and a half thousand kilometers from Switzerland to the east coast of China. I think it took them 11 months. And there's surprisingly little documentation about that online. There's some photos and blog posts and social media, but yeah, that would have been an interesting thing to put on YouTube. But for some reason, whoever did that didn't do it. They had a, a kind of cover uh, panel on top of the bike. They took their family and they used the solar panel to kind of charge and did other things on, on the way. So, and there's a company now, I think you can rent them in, in a city in the Netherlands. For, for companies and so on. You can have a sort of tryout of it. So it's an interesting bike. I'm putting up a kind of high quality kind of image of it here. I'll kind of zoom around and zoom along. This footage of it you can see online. Um, but, um, it's fairly stable, I think. And uh, with the right clothing, I think you can pretty much use it all year round. But yeah, so you know, what, what do you think? Would that be an interesting thing? It's, I'm somehow drawn to it. It just seems quite exciting as a thing to do. It would involve designing it from the ground up, basically from this kind of base chassis that is uh, sold by Vlove. So be thinking about, you know, does it need weather protection or not? Would we want that? How many seats? In what configuration? Would it be modular? So sometimes it could be used for cargo, sometimes for passengers or some mix of that. Yeah, so I, I think it could be really interesting. But I, in the comments, if you'd please put, is this basically, you know, something you think is exciting and interesting and a good kind of YouTube project? Because it would take a long time. I'd have to form new networks to do it and so on. But it could be really interesting and really fun as a kind of car-like midway between a cycle and a car. You know, something a bit interesting. Or, on the other hand, could it be a really expensive, time-consuming and time-wasting money pit? You know, because that's one thing worth mentioning is that the base chassis without, um, you know, extra battery mounts, without uh, indicators, without lights and so on, is already 8,000 euros before VAT. So you're looking at about nine or ten grand in uh, pounds to even get one, you know, as a base chassis. And then you'd be adding everything else and all the extras are listed on their website, excluding VAT. So you can add sort of 20 plus percent on everything. Um, yeah, so as I say, just sort of an interesting idea that popped into my head as something to do. If I am going to do it, it would affect the decisions of what I'm buying now as kind of stopgap things. So maybe I still would go for the, that kind of buzz raw, um, fun fat bike thing to get my kid around. But I wouldn't probably go for a bigger cargo e-bike that's a big investment, um, whether that's the Urban Arrow family that I've shown in previous videos, or I've also been looking at this turn, uh, get stuff done, GSD, S10 and S00. And uh, there's some really interesting things going on with e-bikes that, as I've said before, I think are related to the fact that the sort of common technology platforms from electric cars are crossing across into e-motorbikes and e-bikes and so on. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> those particularly, you can get dual battery configuration where it does run them both at the same time to reduce you know, load and degradation on the batteries. Because I think otherwise bicycle batteries degrade at a really high rate, like 6% a year or something you've seen somewhere expectation on the Bosch batteries that are very popular. But of course, if you run two in parallel and you've got the right battery management system for charging them and discharging them in use, just like an electric car, which is where all of my interest in this comes from, yeah, you can you can kind of run them quite gently. And this turn GSD one has got a range, something ridiculous, like 200, 250 kilometers if you have just light pedal assistance. Although I did look up, because the company that has a demo one here in, in Denmark is up in Habro, I think long way away from ours and about a four hour cycle back if I was going to kind of buy one there and cycle it back using this range. Yeah, it's quite an interesting thing when you think about, okay, great to have huge range on an e-bike and making me think, oh, it's like a, you know electric car, EV kind of range. But then there's the reality of the fact you're going a lot slower. So yeah, cycling that kind of distance, I haven't done anything like that. So but still, anyway, interesting. So yeah, other than that, I've been doing some things with my family. I'm still amazed by the sort of cycling kind of just like overload in our house and, and my kids are getting into that as well. And uh, they've been cycling. My daughter has made enormous progress from not knowing much about cycling in the UK, not feeling confident, being very wobbly and nervous to basically, you know, cycling full pelt nearby. We found some 
uh, safe roads that don't have traffic, so no through roads that she can practice on. And she's even been um, oh, running around as well uh, all the time, enjoying the kind of nature here until the weather gets too bad. And she's been cycling on Barbon Steen that I showed in earlier videos and uh, really enjoying that and just kind of chilling out. So yeah, there's been lots kind of going on, but I guess the main point of this video to kind of wrap it up uh, is, you know, should I do this kind of project? Would it be interesting to you to see? It seems like quite good YouTube fun, but should I avoid it completely? Is it kind of money pit that would stop me ever getting into another EV again, become a kind of all consuming thing? You know, maybe something someone else should do, maybe something a company should take on and I should just buy it off the shelf. Um, you know, or should I take it on as a bit of a project? I've got a shed here. I could be doing things in a shed, um, but I'd be starting from scratch really. And with, I've got some knowledge of electronics and so on. I used to do electronic engineering and I have a background in physics and I've done some prototyping and some hardware work, but I don't have any tools and you know, no drills or clamps or anything like that here. I'd have to find a kind of workshop if I was going to do things or just work with people who had, I guess, prefabricate modules and bits to put on and off it. So yeah, could be interesting. Could be something really interesting to try or could be something just to completely avoid. So I feel quite positive about it at the moment. And it's quite spooky that when I was talking about it, I literally walked into one of these vehicles, saw it straight there. Um, I've only ever seen one one other time in the last four months here in Denmark. So we'll see. Yeah, so let me know what you think in the comments. Good project or money pit. You can comment if you just want to sort of put it briefly. And let me know if you know anyone that's done anything like this or can help with any kind of fabrication or design or networking to kind of, you know, materials, suppliers, that kind of thing. Yeah, really interesting. So yeah, that's this week's video. I'll hopefully get some time. I've had zero, zero time to do much this week and I'm going to Norway again next week. So hopefully some time to arrange some test drives here, um, get into the standard range plus Model 3, finally, try and get into a Kona Electric, finally, try and find out when the Zoe 52 kilowatt hour might be coming to Denmark to get in one of those and uh, then keeping an eye on other developments. Yeah, so thanks for sort of, you know, sticking along with me on this kind of meandering journey of working out what to do here in Denmark about transport, you know, zero tailpipe emissions transport. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me and bye for now.